So I posted this video on my channel the other day ago, and in the start of that video, I put together a short little edit that has some cool transitions, and almost everyone in the comments were actually asking how I created these transitions, and I actually got the inspiration to create these transitions because of different videos online from like Instagram and TikTok, and these transitions have become pretty popular now, and I think it's because of this account called Gabbit Effects, I think. I hope I pronounced the name right, but anyways, I've been requested a lot to do a tutorial on this effect, so I'm finally making a video on it, and I know this tutorial probably isn't going to be exactly how he created creates these transitions, but it's going to be pretty similar and hopefully it's easy to follow along as well. But I'm going to try to keep it pretty simple so you can hopefully understand just the basic animations of this effect. But like I said, you can get super creative with this once you understand the basics. So I have three different clips here, which means I'm going to have two different transitions. And I just like to overlap these layers or clips almost halfway, maybe a little bit under though. You also want to go ahead and layer your clips so that they're underneath each other. So as you can see, they just kind of stagger underneath each other and that's pretty much what you want. So the first thing we're going to do here is go up to the pen tool and create a mask around the car or whatever subject you have. Um, and we're just going to take this mask out here and then bring it down underneath the ground. So now we have the car and the ground here masked out. Let's now hit M on our keyboard to open up the mask. We can right click this and hit track mask and it'll bring up the tracker here. Let's go ahead and analyze forward. And if I just go ahead and toggle off my layers underneath this, you can see this mask did not track well at all. Um, so we're going to have to go ahead and fix this up. And honestly, I don't think we're going to be able to use the uh, auto tracker and we're just going to have to manually do this. So if that's the case for you, then you'll just have to select all these points and then go either frame by frame or just skip a few frames here and there and make sure it aligns up pretty well along each frame. And I'm going to go back to where I started that mask tracking and actually analyze backwards. And that seems to do a little bit better. So we can go ahead and keep that. I'm now going to duplicate this layer. So hitting control D will duplicate the layer. Let's go into the mask and just delete that. So now we have a blank layer on the bottom and I want the transition to happen somewhere around here. So I'm going to hit T on my keyboard to bring up the opacity. And I'm going to set a keyframe on the stopwatch here and then go a few frames over and bring the opacity back down to 0%. Now I'm also going to toggle back on these layers just so I can see the footage underneath it now. Now let's go ahead and create a camera. So let's go into layer, new camera. And for the preset, I'm just going to be using the 35 millimeter. Let's hit OK. Now let's go back up to layer, new, and create a null object. Make sure the null object is 3D and then parent the camera to that null object. And then let's go ahead and make all of our other layers 3D and hitting P on your keyboard will open up the position values. I'm gonna set a keyframe right before that opacity starts to reveal the second clip. And then let's go a few frames after that opacity is fully revealed and set another keyframe here. And on the second keyframe here is where we're gonna animate it to reveal the second clip. So using the position Z value and mainly just the Y value, you hardly really need to use the X. I mean, you can, but it's up to you and where you want the camera to animate to. So for this clip right here, I don't really need to move the X position right now. So just by moving the Y and the Z will be good enough. As you can see, the second layer is just way too zoomed in here. So to fix that, let's go into the scale and position. So if you hit S on that layer and then hold shift, and then P, it'll open up your scale and position values at the same time. So we can scale this layer down, move it up on the Y axis. And we basically just want to scale this down till it kind of fits our layer. So somewhere around here looks pretty good. I might even scale it down just a little bit more and then move it back up. And we can always move these clips around later if we need to, but this is just kind of a rough idea of where we want the camera to animate to. So next we're going to need to mask out our second clip. So going back into the pen tool, Let's just go ahead and create a mask around this car. And once again, I'm going to go into the mask and then try tracking this. And hopefully this does a better job than the last time. And it looks like this actually did a lot better than the last mask. So I can go ahead and keep that. And let's just now go ahead and analyze this backwards. So now we have the mask tracked around the full clip. Once again, we're going to go ahead and duplicate this layer. And on the bottom layer, let's just delete that mask and then bring up the opacity by hitting T and set a keyframe and then go a few frames over and then bring this down to 0%. So basically doing the same thing that we just did for the other clip. Now, as you can see, when I bring the opacity down, it reveals just the black composition or the background here. So what we need to do is just move this layer over so it fills that black kind of void. So now we're not seeing the black layer up here, but now our footage is way too scaled up. So once again, I'm gonna hit S and then Shift P. We'll bring up the scale and position and let's just scale this all the way down to maybe like 30% and then bring this down. And this is where I might even mess with the X value. Okay, so this is looking good for now, but I might have to go back and change it after I animate this camera. So I'm gonna set this next keyframe for the camera animation to start 
a little bit after that opacity ends. So around like maybe 20 frames after that opacity is done. Let's go ahead and scale this all the way back in by using that Z value and then bring it up. And I might even actually use the X value to move this over to the right. And yeah, I guess I'm gonna have to go back into this footage and scale it back down even more and then move this up a little bit and then maybe even move it to the right like this. That looks pretty good. Now I can go back into the camera and just scale this up even more, move it up. And we're basically just doing this so it kind of hides that first layer of the car. All right, so now we have the basics of this animation done. Now we just have to smooth out the keyframes. Another thing I should mention here is we can also keyframe the rotation of this camera. So if I hit R while holding down shift, it'll bring up the orientation. And you really just wanna use the Z rotation. You can mess with the Y and X if you want, but I wouldn't really recommend doing that. So let's set a keyframe for the Z rotation at the start of our animation. Then let's go to the middle keyframe that we set earlier. And then let's just bring this to like maybe 9% or 8 and then let's go to our very last keyframe and bring this back down to 0% So that just adds a little bit of a rotation to the camera Then we can go ahead and smooth out these keyframes So select all of them and then right click this and go to keyframe assistant easy ease Now let's go ahead and select our position and right click this and hit separate dimensions And we're going to start out by smoothing out the X position So selecting that and then going into the graph editor this is what the graph looks like for our X position. So let's go ahead and fix this and smooth it out a bit. Also, if you're not seeing the value graph like I have here, you wanna right click your graph and then go into the value graph, but you might be on the speed graph like this. So yeah, just go in and select the edit value graph. So you basically just wanna smooth out these keyframes and hopefully you kind of already have a basic understanding of how these graphs work in After Effects. There's probably more videos that go more in depth on how to use a speed graph and value graph instead of after effects but you kind of just want to copy i guess what i'm doing here by creating these smooth little almost s shapes that kind of speed up towards the middle and then slow down at the end so once you're done with your x position we can go into the y so just by selecting the y position you can now see the graph for this and this is exactly what we don't want right here is these two points kind of going towards the middle like this this will just create a very rough and kind of unsettling effect and we just don't want it to look like that so so by clicking this middle point and bringing these points so they kind of even out towards the middle is kind of the effect we're going for here. And then also bringing this top point and bringing this over as well as the end over here. So just by changing the graph to look like this, you can see the animation already looks way smoother. So lastly, let's go into the Z position and do the same thing for this. All right, so there we go. Now our Z position is all smoothed out. Now lastly, we're just gonna go into our rotation and then smooth this one out as well. This line of the graph might look a little bit different from the position, but it's basically the same concept here. And there we go. Now our animation is looking super clean. Let's now go ahead and apply motion blur to all these layers. Let's go to our layers and turn on motion blur for all those layers. Make sure motion blur is toggled on for our composition. And since my layers end a bit short here, like this one, for example, when I go into this first transition, the car kind of cuts off right here. And that's because my footage just ends. So ideally you wanna have footage that's pretty long so you don't run into that issue. But if you do run into this issue and you can't extend this footage anymore, then we're just gonna go into the position for that layer and let's just set a keyframe for that and then animate this to kind of just slide down. So by using the Y value, we can move this down. And that just makes it a little bit more seamless and it doesn't have some abrupt ending to that layer. And it looks like that also happened for my last clip right here too. So let's go ahead and do that same thing for this one. Also, if you're running into any clipping issues, like from this transition right here, you can kind of see the edge of the footage. So to fix this, let's go into the effects and presets and search up motion tile and bring this onto that background layer. You wanna make sure that you apply that motion tile to only your background layer that has the opacity and not the mask on it, or else you might be motion tiling the actual car itself which won't look good. And then go ahead and change the output width to 200 and then change the height to 200 as well. And then click mirror edges. So with that effect toggled on, it just helps clean up those edges. And I'm gonna go ahead and copy and paste that effect to these other layers just to make sure I don't run into any issues. Lastly, if you wanted to, you could add some shake. I'm just using my shake presets that I'll have linked down in the description below. And with an adjustment layer, I just dragged on the shake one. And I'm just gonna have this start at like the first transition right here. And then I'm just gonna duplicate that adjustment layer and then have it start at the second transition as well so now we have a pretty subtle shake along those transitions and that's kind of up to you if you want to add that i've seen it a few times in a few different edits but some people prefer not to have that shake so it's pretty much just up to you whether you want to use it or not but yeah if you wanted to use those shakes i highly recommend using them i'll have them linked down in the description below where you can go ahead and download them as you just saw they're super easy to use and that's why i like using them for almost all of my different shake effects but yeah that's pretty much it for this video
video. If you guys enjoyed it, then make sure to drop a like and subscribe to my channel. And I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace out.